Hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you joining me, I am going live on two platforms. I am Dr. Mary Claire Haber. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I am also uh, a board certified nutritionist. Um, I'm a culinary medicine specialist certified. So I am here today by request. I've had several requests um, across multiple platforms to provide more information on contraception and contraceptive options. So I know that many of my followers, um, I can look at my demographics, are female. Over 90% of you across all platforms are female, and most of you are actually 35 and older. Several of you are past reproductive age. So this may not apply to you directly, but several of you have reached out to me personally, privately, DMs, on social media, so that you could help provide information to your loved ones who are of reproductive age about the different contraceptive options. Um, I've had a lot of people who are very uncomfortable with some of the rule with the SCOTUS ruling and very worried for their loved ones and wanting to know and wanting me and who also have expressed um, as is their right, that they are not comfortable with abortion as birth control, and why can we not keep people from getting pregnant? So my focus today is to make sure that as many people as I can reach out to, and I'm going live on Facebook right now as well as TikTok, have access to information about reliable contraception. So um, I will get to a question and answer section at the end. I will stay live as long as you need me to be here and make sure that everyone's questions are answered. So um, again, if, you, if this doesn't apply to you, no problem. If you feel like this video would be helpful to a loved one, please share this video. On Facebook, you can hit the share, like, comment button. Also on TikTok, you can hit the share button on my phone. It's right here. I'm on my laptop on uh, Facebook uh, going live here. And so again, I will try to get to the questions at the end of um, my discussion. So um, let's see, where's, let me get to my data guys, hang on. Uh, okay, so let me go through some statistics so everybody has a clear understanding. Almost half of the over 6 million pregnancies in the United States every year are accidents. So 50% of pregnancies in the United States are unplanned, meaning she was not purposeful, you know, the couple or however this indicated, this was not something she was planning to do. The pregnancy was considered to be an accident. And so um, how does this happen? How do, when we have, you know, reasonable access to contraception, not everyone in this country, how does this happen? A lot of women are choosing unreliable forms of contraception that in perfect use have 99% uh, protection rate against an unplanned pregnancy. However, um, in actual use, which is because we're human beings, we forget, we, you know, life gets in the way, and we have some failure of our contraception. And so um, about 5% of the time per year, women using reliable birth control find themselves unexpectedly pregnant just because Almost, you know, forms of contraception, especially the ones most prescribed and most used, have a failure rate. And that should have been explained to you when you um, signed up for contraception. So, okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about the birth control pill. Oral contraceptions contain hormones. How do they work? Okay, so birth control pills, oral contraceptives, contain hormones that stop ovulation. No egg, no baby, correct? No egg, no baby. And however, and if taken perfectly, if you take it at the exact same time every day, you have no nausea, no vomiting, no diarrhea, no uh, mixing with another medication, an antibiotic or something that might decrease the effectiveness, issue, you have no liver disease, you have, you know, everything is absolutely perfect, you're healthy, that the typical, you know, the 99.7% protection against an unplanned pregnancy for someone who is sexually active, okay? The typical use, the way most human beings take the pill every day, is not perfect use. We're human. We forget. We miss a pill. We have delayed, you know, we, we forget during the day and we ended up taking it at night. So the typical use rate of pregnancy is about 91%. So nine 
you know, one out of 10 women roughly on oral contraception, on the pill, will, and that's with a combined oral contraceptive pill, it's a little bit higher with the progestin only pill, um, will have an unplanned pregnancy. So I will not tolerate any hate in the comments on either side. I am here today doing my best to educate. I cannot change SCOTUS, I cannot change what happened, and all I can do now is help people who don't want to be pregnant not be pregnant. So I'm seeing some of the comments um, in this section. So, okay. Um, there are certain antibiotics that 100% of the time are going to decrease the effectiveness of the pill. One is rifampin. Okay, rifampin is given in times, I was given rifampin when there was a meningitis outbreak when I was in graduate school in New Zealand. We all had to line up in the dorm and take the rifampin. My urine turned orange, I cried orange tears, and I started my period because rifampin does things to the liver that knock out the effects of estrogen. You basically, the pill doesn't work while you're taking the rifampin, okay? There's also an antifungal called griseofolin. Um, it's not prescribed that often. Um, it is for certain fungal diseases. It again, because of effects on the liver, will decrease the, dramatically decrease the effectiveness of the birth control pills. So certain anti-seizure meds and, a, and an herbal supplement you can get over the counter, St. John's wort. If you have been taking St. John's wort to help with anxiety or depression, it will decrease the effectiveness of your birth control pill. So um, if you skip a dose, and this should have been information from your physician, if you skip a dose, take it as soon as you can. If you've missed more than two pills, take them as soon as you remember and continue to take pills while using a daily backup method of birth control of condoms for at least a week, okay? Um, all right, and if you're on a mini pill, a progesterone only pill, many of you are not candidates for estrogen or you're nursing and you were given a progesterone only pill or you have headaches or whatever, you more than combined, combined meaning estrogen and progesterone must take it at the same time every day. I mean, set an alarm, do whatever you need to do, okay? Um, so let's move on. So how do you know, we have combined oral contraception, there's different ways to get it into your body. So we have patches and we have rings, okay? These work similarly as far as how they work in the body, they work the same. We're just getting the estrogen and progesterone into your body a different way, okay? Um, you either insert a ring into your vagina, then the anovera or the nuva ring, or place a patch on your belly, upper arms, buttock or back, the ortho evra patch, um, and there are some generics for that. Like the pill, they're over 99% effective when you take them exactly like you should, but typical use drops that to 91%, okay? The way most people use them. So one out of 10 women will have an unplanned pregnancy by using this form of contraception. Um, all right, now we're gonna move on. And same thing, if you forget, you gotta put the next patch on, use backup contraception, all the things, okay? Um, the birth control shot, birth control shot. This is gonna be Depo-Provera. On the birth control shot, you get it every three months. It contains the hormone progesterone in high doses that will stop ovulation. With perfect use, it's 99.8% effective. Sometimes people forget to get their injection on time or they run late or they lose their insurance or something, okay? Um, so, now we're going to move on to the birth control implant, okay, the one we, we usually implant it here between the bicep and tricep on the inner aspect of the arm. So it's a thin matchstick size rod that your doctor inserts in your arm. It releases hormones that prevent pregnancy for up to three years. It's virtually foolproof, okay. The, if you learn nothing more from my discussion today, long-acting reversible contraception is the way. Do not be pregnant, okay? If you were serious about contraception, you should choose a long-acting, and you want to be pregnant in the future, okay? You wanna have the option to be pregnant in the future. Long-acting reversible contraception is the way. Okay, so I've covered the pill, I've covered the patches, I've covered the depo. If you're serious, serious about not being pregnant, long-acting reversible contraception. So, um, that is going to be the birth control implant, which I will discuss in detail, or an intrauterine device, which I will discuss in detail. 
So what is the implant? It's a thin matchstick sized rod that a doctor inserts in your arm. It releases hormone, prevents pregnancy for up to three years. It's foolproof since your body, it's already in your body and you don't have to remember to take it or use it right away. As a result, the typical and perfect use is over 99.9% .9 effective. Let me say that again. Typical and perfect use is 99.9% .9 effective. If you've had the implant for three years and you still don't wanna get pregnant, you gotta replace it, okay? Get another one. Otherwise, you could end up with an unexpected pregnancy and have to deal with the consequences from that. Okay, um, IUD, intrauterine device, intrauterine device, which your doctor inserts into your vagina, prevents sperm from reaching the egg. The way an IUD works is it creates a barrier to sperm transport through the cervix. It creates a thick mucus plug that prevents the, that creates an environment where the sperm cannot move. The copper also creates a mild inflammatory reaction in the uterine. So if one gets through the cervix, it cannot move. It renders the sperm immodal. Okay, so there's no fertilization. There is no fertilization, okay? It is, um, so there are more than 99.2% effective, whether you use it perfectly or not. Unlike other forms of birth control, you can't forget to take it or use it the wrong way. Once it's in, you're protected from pregnancy for anywhere from three to 10 years, depending on the type that you get. So there are two types, copper and a progesterone containing. Okay, there's multiple forms of the progesterone containing. Some last three years, some last five years. The copper lasts 10 years, okay? Copper IUDs are the number one form of contraception worldwide. Almost every woman in China has one, okay? Um, and they have no hormones. So if hormones are an issue for you, this is a good form. Side effects of copper IUD could be heavier or more crampy periods. So if that is already an issue, you may wanna consider the progesterone containing. Side effects of the progesterone containing IUD um, is very little. Your periods get lighter and less crampy, okay? And some women stop having periods altogether and you'll probably see in the comments that, you know. Um, so I don't know, so let me give this my personal opinion on IUDs, I fucking love them, okay? I think they're amazing forms of contraception. One issue is they can be very painful to insert, okay? very painful to insert. You must insist with your practitioner called ahead to provide adequate anesthesia for the procedure. They have the ability to make this more comfortable for you, but you're going to probably have to put your foot down to insist on proper pain control so that you can have a comfortable experience on having your IUD inserted. This will be a multimodal approach, preferably to pain management to include oral pain control with our plus or minus an analgesic, uh, plus or minus a narcotic, um, and local pain control with some kind of a numbing situation or you know either through a topical cream or gel, plus or minus a injection at the cervix to numb the cervix so that the entire procedure is more comfortable for you. It can also include anti-anxiety medication to make the procedure more comfortable. Okay, I'm a huge advocate for adequate pain control. In Now, I cannot speak to the supply chain, but by the amount of calls and requests and questions that I have had in the last, since yesterday, about IUDs, I suggest you go get one if you're interested. I highly recommend them for almost everyone, okay? Very few people are not candidates, and that's up to you and your doctor to decide but I'm a little worried because of what's happened with tampons and what's happened with baby formula and where women's health needs sit on the rung of national, you know, of, of what you know, we need to have. You should get it immediately. There are also active legislation I have seen. I am not making this up. I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm not trying to have scare tactics where IUDs are attempted to be outlawed Justice Clarence Thomas, it's all over social media. You can pull up his personal, I forget, I forget all the legal terms. Someone help me in the comments. 
there is a um, opinion, his opinion about the Roe v. Wade overturn, I forget what it's called, but that he basically thinks that, in his opinion statement, that the legal right to contraception, um, as well as gay marriage, should be overturned as well. That will kind of springboard certain forms of you having barriers to your contraceptive options. Um, and a lot of very, very conservative legislators are thinking that IUDs are abortifacient. They are not. They are not. And fighting to have them removed. So um, if you are interested, my advice to you is as soon as possible to go and make an appointment with a healthcare provider to have your long acting reversible contraception implanted. So at least you have a break for three to 10 years where you don't have to worry about this because it is so effective. Now, is it perfect? No, remember 99.3%. So there are people who will get pregnant with IUDs. I've seen it, okay? But the vast, 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 vast majority of patients will not, will not, okay? Um, let's see, um, vaginal contraception is inserted into the vagina to create an inhospitable environment for sperm so it won't reach the egg for contraception. This is the forms including foams, jellies, tablets, creams, suppositories, or dissolvable film. Um, these are only 70 to 80% effective, but work better when you combine it with a condom or a diaphragm, and diaphragms are now almost impossible to find in the United States. Um, so, Fexi is considered to be 86% effective when used correctly, but given that your options after an unplanned pregnancy are going to be limited in many areas, I would not recommend barrier methods Throw those con I mean, you know, <laughs> condoms should only be backup contraception. Condoms should never be your first line defense against an unplanned pregnancy, ever, ever. It's STD protection and backup contraception. Let me say it again. Condoms should never, ever be your first line. First of all, do not put that power in someone else's hands. If a pregnancy would be devastating to you and change the outcome of your life in a negative direction, you cannot use condoms as your primary form of contraception, okay? All right, barrier methods, don't even do it. Okay, so um, the male condom, only 82% effective, not your, in your best bet. Um, all right, so fertility awareness methods. I know a lot of uh, people rely on this form of contraception. This is natural family planning or the rhythm method. These help track your menstrual cycle so you know when you're ovulating. These are actually better for getting pregnant rather than not getting pregnant. Again, you have to rely on abstinence, which is the least, you know, on periodic abstinence, which is not an option for many people. Um, to do this, you have to take your temperature every day, check your cervical mucus, and chart your cycle on a calendar. Um, so if you use at least one of these methods and you follow it perfectly, perfectly, there's less than a five chance percent you get pregnant, but it's so tough for most women and the typical effectiveness rate lower, lowers to about 70%. So one in three women using natural family planning will have an unplanned pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy. So, um, all right, I will, so that is kind of my spiel, so at the, my, um, so let me take a break here. If you're on Facebook, I'll jump to you guys here in just a second to see if I have any questions. If you are on um, TikTok, drop your questions in the comments right now and I will try to get to them. Again, I cannot give personalized medical advice. I can only give general advice on social media. I cannot practice medicine <laughs> on Facebook. I can only educate. So, um, Okay, let's see. What about an arm implant? So I covered this a little bit earlier. So if you're just joining me, let's take a little break to reintroduce. I'm gonna stay on this live as long as I can. My name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm a board certified gynecologist. I'm going live on two platforms right now. If you see me looking around, I'm live on Facebook, on my Facebook page at The Galveston Diet. I'm also live on TikTok. And I am trying to spread as much education, awareness, and knowledge around contraception as possible. So if you are just joining me, please interact with this video. If you're on TikTok, you can just tap my face like this. 
to everybody tap my face 10 times that will like this video it helps drive the algorithm it will um, it will keep me relevant on this platform which is a little bit hard I've come out publicly on my um, stance on women's health and I've lost followers. I don't use followers as vanity metrics. I don't care how many followers I have. I only care that I can educate, teach, share it, spread awareness and knowledge and create a more helpful environment for people, for human beings to thrive. And um, so thank you for following me. So follow, like, share across um, whichever platform you are watching me on. And um, so let me start over from the beginning if you're just joining me. I um, am here talking about contraception. I am talking about reliable contraception. And this all comes from, I have had multiple people in my comment section when I came out about my stance um, say, hey, look, these are reasonable human beings, guys. And they are like, I don't like abortion as birth control. Okay, I understand that. I totally understand where you're coming from. Can you talk about contraception? Why are people getting pregnant? So I am here today to talk about contraception, what works, what doesn't, and make sure that you have enough knowledge to walk into your doctor's office. As I do with menopause, I spread knowledge and awareness so that you can have empowered conversations with your physicians. Um, and I know a lot of you are my age, I'm 53 years old, I don't have to worry about a pregnancy. I'm done, okay? I'm menopausal, I'm not getting pregnant. This is not anything for me to worry about. I'm here to talk to your daughters. I had so many reach out to me personally yesterday, and I did a lot of counseling in, through social media DMs on different forms of contraception so that these young women, so please, if you feel like this information would help, tag them, share this video, Follow me, like, so that I can continue to spread this message. Okay, let me get to a couple questions. Um, had a hysterectomy, okay. Uh, let's see, I don't, okay. Tap and share the live. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. What's the best contraception for women 40 years and above? That's a great question. So if you are older than 40 years, any form of contraception, <laughs> um, if you are done having children, okay, if you are done and you have, if you know that you are done and a pregnancy would devastate you and, uh, and not having, and having to have deal with a pregnancy that you are not prepared for, not ready for, the best form of contraception, the best, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but I'm gonna say it, is a vasectomy, okay? The best form of contraception is a vasectomy. It's the safest, most reliable, Form. Now, I know someone's going to get up in my comments and be like, my, I got pregnant with after my husband's vasectomy. Nothing's 100% other than abstinence. And I'm assuming abstinence is not an option here, okay, when I say these blanket statements. But if you were in a monogamous, if you're in a relationship with someone and you're not seeking other partners and you are, the, as a couple, deciding you do not want further option to have children, the vasectomy is the safest form of contraception and just as reliable as you having your tubes tied. It's a less invasive procedure. It's, it's done so quick you don't have to fight with anyone in a urologist's office to have it done. You call, you schedule, you have it done, it's done, okay? Quite often it is covered by insurance depending on the insurance plan. It is a lot cheaper than some of the female options of contraception. It's a one and done. So if you have not wrote this conversation with your partner, it's time. It's time, okay? It's time to start that conversation, and he may be amenable to it. Now, I'm not going to get into why men choose not to have vasectomy. You're not touching my junk is the number one way. And, you know, so for those of you whose partners have had vasectomies, shout out all the love. Give me some hands up. Give me some five. Give me some likes. He's a badass. I'm just going to say it. He's a badass. He's a badass. Okay. So, partner refuses to have a vasectomy. So, he's putting the burden on you. So, now what do we do? We're over 40. What's our best form of contraception? Well, it depends. Okay. You want something reliable, non reversible, long acting contraception is always the number one choice. Always. Okay. That's going to be an implant 
or an IUD. It takes the user error out of the equation. Long-acting reversible contraception, IUD or implant. That's it, okay? The intrauterine device is not an abortifacient. It does not cause abortions. It stops sperm in their tracks. They cannot move, they cannot wiggle. It creates a barrier and a hostile environment to sperm. That is how it works. It does not affect ovulation. You still ovulate every month. You still have your normal cycles as far as what's going on hormonally in your body. If you choose an IUD with progesterone embedded in it, that would be the Mariner or the Kylesa or whichever one you choose, those will make your cycles lighter and less crampy because of the local action of progesterone. Very little progesterone is absorbed systemically. It's not enough to inhibit ovulation, okay? That's not how it works. It's locally active, it thins the lining of the uterus, and most women will decrease their cycle amount. It's great treatment for heavy bleeding. So if you're over 40 and you're having heavy, crampy periods, I would consider an IUD with progesterone, things to talk to your doctor about, okay? If you have very light, normal periods and you really don't want hormones, you've had, you know, it's just something you're not interested in, a copper IUD may be for you, okay? Last 10 years, easy to insert for the, for the provider, and um, has no hormones, okay? Works great, 99.3% effectiveness. It can make your periods heavier and more crampy. So if that's already an issue, it's not gonna work for you. Who's not a candidate for an IUD? If you have a uterine abnormality, some misshapen uterus, a didelphus, a heart shape, this may be the, not the right form of contraception for you. If you have fibroids that are distending or creating an abnormal contour to your intrauterine cavity or distending it, IUD may not be for you. These are all things that need to be investigated by your physician, okay? Not everyone is a candidate. The implant is called Nexplanon. The original uh, version was called Implanon, and then they came up with the next version. It is a matchstick size implant that contains progesterone only, no estrogen, at doses sufficient enough to suppress ovulation. Suppress ovulation, okay? 99.7% effective, and it lasts for three years. Um, now, the studies on Nexplanon were done with women who were not morbidly obese. So, um, some of the effectiveness of a hormonal birth control is reduced if you are overweight or obese. And if that is you and a pregnancy would devastate you, I would consider an intrauterine device because it is not relying on hormones for ovulation suppression, which may be more difficult, okay? Um, the pill, if taken perfectly in a normal way, in a woman under the curve of what we call average or normal, not in morbidly obese, those numbers drop, um, is 99.3% effective. However, that's not what happens in real life. We don't take it at the same time every day. We are human beings. Life gets in the way. We forget. We leave it at home. We don't try, you know, whatever. Whatever happens, we're not, you know, the actual use of the way people really take the pill is 91% effective, and that's for combined, not progestin only. That drops even further. So one in 10 women on oral contraceptive pills will get pregnant on birth control. One in 10 a year, a year, okay, a year. So think about that when you are choosing your form of contraception. I have patients and friends who switch to a Nexplanon or switch to an IUD and their acne flared because birth control pills can be a treatment for acne. It lowers our androgen levels, which can drive acne. They end up going back on a low-dose birth control pill with their IUD or Nexplanon simply to help their skin. That's okay. Nothing dangerous, nothing wrong with doing that. And you're on two forms of contraception. You're not getting pregnant. So condoms, never, never, never consider condoms as a primary form of contraception. You will get pregnant. You will, eventually. It'll catch up with you. Only 70%, 73% effectiveness, and you're letting someone else control your contraception, which I'm not a fan of, okay? I'm here for women's health. So, okay, um, condoms should only be for STD prevention 
or pr pr protection and backup contraception. There's nothing wrong with using more than one form of contraception, especially now. So um, let me scroll down and see if I have any more questions. Let's see, thanks for all the info. Okay, so if you're just joining me, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm doing the filibuster here <laughs> on TikTok, talking about different forms of contraception. Please follow me, please like and share this video. I am walking on my treadmill because yesterday I was angry, today I was woke up very, very sad and uh, movement helps my, my psyche. And so I'm getting riled up talking about this stuff and, and moving helps me and it just is gonna make me feel better later on today. Plus I drank too much wine last night. So um, I'm sweating it all out right now. I'm in my garage where my treadmill is. I don't have my AC or my fan on because it's so loud. I wanna be able to communicate effectively. And so it's super hot in here because it's Texas. Um, okay, so I want to see questions. Let, let me be your guide. Let me help you make these decisions. Um, Eshore sterilization, get removed. The FDA has removed it as an option. Eshore, too many problems with it. Um, now, we can talk about sterilization for women, okay? Um, my favorite time to perform tubal ligation is at C-section. I rarely recommend, I'm always counseling patients about vasectomy versus sterilization, but if you're having a C-section and you're sure you're done with having kids, the, um, the time to do it, because it does not add very much risk to the C-section or time to the procedure is at section, okay? If it's a vaginal delivery, then I really, I, talk, I at least say, you know, have you talked to your partner about vasectomy? That's going to be the safest, most reliable option, you know, of all the forms of permanent, you know, sterilization is sterilizing the partner. If he refuses, then we talk about how do we go about doing that. East Shore is off the table. That is no longer an option here in the United States. So um, now we're just looking at surgical. So it's gonna be surgery. You're gonna have a surgical copay or have to pay completely out of pocket for this procedure. It is a day surgery. Um, so it is typically done lap now laparoscopically. Postpartum tubules are done um, within a few hours after delivery. They are done without laparoscopy. So the uterus after delivery shrinks down to about five month size, just to give you an idea. And so the fundus, the top of the uterus is right at the belly button typically, not for everyone, but somewhere in there. And what we do for a postpartum tubal ligation is we go around the belly button, we make a little U-shaped incision, we dissect down, it's a very thin area because the umbilicus is there, and that area of the abdominal wall tends to get very thin. And it's an easy place for us to get in, and the tubes are typically right there. Remember, you go around the top of the fundus, and you'll see the fallopian tube. So um, shout out to Isarene Williams, my surgical tech in residency, who really taught me how to do tubules and how to find a fallopian tube. Um, so don't forget, postpartum tubal sterilization is usually covered by insurance. You're already in the hospital after having a baby and is considered to be fairly low risk, okay? So if your partner is refusing a vasectomy, then this is going to be an option for you, but you need to know about it. If you're on Medicaid, there is a waiting period. You need to talk to your doctor probably around five, six months pregnancy, get the federal paper signed so that you will then be a candidate to have your tubal um, either at C-section or postpartum. So say you're, you know, you had babies a long time ago and you have decided that's it, I'm done, or you have decided that as a human being, regardless of your age, you don't ever want children, I fully support your choice, and you want to be sterilized. You don't want to deal with hormones, IUDs, whatever. Your periods are light, normal, you don't want to mess with them, and you don't have acne, you have no reason, a medical reason to go on contraception other than the fact that you never want to be pregnant, okay, in the future, okay? I recognize your autonomy and I recognize your choice and it is absolutely okay. So sterilization, how do we do it? It's usually done laparoscopically, meaning we go through the belly button with a camera about that big and then we make one to two ports depending on the method that we use in typically or just above your hip bones roughly. I'm just, you know, if you take your hip bones, you go up and out, up and in two centimeters. That's where we typically go in, okay? Those are typically safe areas. We go in with the instruments and we do different methods to basically remove sections of the tube or destroy sections of the tubes. Um, there's carterization where we can just burn the tubes, effectively destroying them. There's, um, uh, we can put loops 
basically where we have a little ring, we pull a section up and we drop a very tight band around um, the tube or you can surgically remove the tubes, completely remove them um, with laparoscopic techniques or remove pieces of the tube. They all work, some work a tiny bit better than others, but considered to be very, very effective. Nothing's 100%, there are failure rates, but it's very, very rare. Um, but again, it's expensive, you have surgical time, there's surgical risks, and a vasectomy as an option is a lot cheaper, a lot safer when you're looking at risk, and um, is very, very effective. So, okay. Uh, let's see, I am, thanks for the info. How safe is an IUD? You heard horror stories about removal and infection. Infection rate on IUDs, I've never seen an infected IUD, ever, okay? Um, I've seen difficulty in certain, you know, difficult insertions, difficult removals. I've seen IUDs, um, per, you know, IUDs that were put in and they perforated the uterus. Those are all known complications of IUDs, but they're fortunately very, very rare. Um, here's my caveat on an intrauterine device if that's the way you choose to go. You need to insist on adequate pain control. It should be multimodal, okay, meaning multiple forms of pain management. If you're anxious, they can give you an anti-anxiety, self-limited anti-anxiety medication. Um, here was my protocol for IUDs. This was my personal way that I treated my patients. They received um, a very small dose of an anti-anxiety medication and a combined analgesic narcotic before they got to the office within an hour of the procedure, okay? I also gave them a shot of Toradol, which is Catalorac, which is an anti-inflammatory, works well to help um, with prostaglandins created in the uterus from cramping. I would also do a paracervical block where I would inject the cervix around with a lidocaine or some equivalent medication, a uh, quarter percent marcaine, to numb the cervix so that insertion through this into cervical canal was much easier. This is not standard of care. I was going over and above for my patients because of my, I was not trained to do this. This was my experience with patients experiencing tremendous amounts of pain in the procedure and I did not want them to hurt. There is no way I can predict who is gonna have an easy breezy IUD placement, not feel anything, jump off the bed, say thank you very much, kiss me and walk out the door, or the patient who is going to be having a vagal reaction, vomiting, throwing up, screaming in pain. I don't want plan B. I wanted that patient to walk out happy okay, as happy as possible, and so it was in my power and in every gynecologist's power to offer adequate pain control because I don't know who's going to need it, so I just gave it to everybody. So, um, options for teenagers, all of the above. Long-acting reversible contraception for teenagers. Moms, don't be scared of this stuff. You are not ruining her uh, ability to get pregnant in the future. You are not r giving her permission to have sex. You're doing none of the above. Okay, you are giving her access to the most reliable form of contraception so that as, an, as a sexually active young person, which I'm promising you ladies, this is happening. I have raised two daughters. I have taken care of this entire community. It's a very conservative community. These girls are sexually active. People are having sex. This is a normal, natural part of life, okay? Um, Wishing for abstinence and wishing that they choose purity is not going to work for most of them, okay? So if you want to protect your child, if you want to offer them the best pregnancy prevention strategy, long-acting reversible contraception is the way. That is going to be, even for a teenager, there's nothing wrong with offering these things. An intrauterine device or the Nexplanon implant. I lean more towards an IUD. Um, it is more invasive to put in. Certainly if your daughter is the victim of sexual trauma, a, pelvic ex a long pelvic exam like that is not, um, is something that, that may not be comfortable for her. So then the next one on would be something, but this is something you need to get down and dirty and talk to your children about, talk to your loved ones about, talk to your family members about, so that they are not faced with a pregnancy that they are not ready for. So, um, okay, let's see. Uh, how about Depo-Provera? So Depo-Provera injection, um, 
does work. It is 99% effective, okay? There are a couple of issues with Depo that make me it not be my number one choice. It's very, very effective. And some people absolutely love it and do awesome on it, okay? One is reversible bone loss. So at that, at younger ages, we are building our bone and, and getting our max bone strength at about age 25 and it starts to decline after that. You disrupt that process, it is reversible with Depo because we're suppressing estrogen so much with the Depo Prevair. Um, and estrogen is what's needed to support bone, tur bone turnover. They basically start getting into osteopenia early. Um, also, Depo has been linked to increased depression rates. Not, you know, so if there's any history of mental health or, did, you know, I would not have to stay away from Depo. There's also an average weight gain average of five pounds a year. Some people have no weight gain, some people have tremendous weight gain, but it is a pretty much guaranteed weight gain of about three to five pounds a year. A lot of people don't like that. So, however, <laughs> pregnancy is going to make you gain a lot more than that. So, it's all about balance. Um, so it's not my favorite, not when we have the implant and we have, now, side effects of the implant, irregular bleeding, almost everybody, okay? It suppresses ovulation, but it does not suppress folliculogenesis. So you have baseline levels of estrogen production um, without ovulating, so that protects our bones. That's why you don't have the bone loss issues with the Nexplanon. So your bones stay nice and strong. However, side effect is you're weakly stimulating the endometrium and you can have irregular spotting, almost everyone does. So it can be a nuisance, it's rarely pathologic, you know, but people don't like it because they don't know when their period's coming, it's light, it's just kind of, you never know, you're, you don't ever have anything available. And so that is one of the potential side effects of the next line. So, um, birth control for the obese, great question. So a lot of the hormonal, Contraceptive studies, that's including birth control pills, the mini pill, and um, the Nexplanon, were not done in obese people, okay? So one, we don't know, or in the pill, we know it's not as effective. It's not as effective. So for obesity, where, again, a pregnancy would devastate your life, and you're, if you're done having kids, get sterilized, okay? Or have, have your partner have a vasectomy. Number two, IUD. Intrauterine device will obesity will not affect the effectiveness of an intrauterine device. So you're almost 50, you had an ablation. Do you need birth control still? Yes. Ablation is not contraception. Ablation is not contraception. Most people who get pregnant after an ablation have a tubal pregnancy. And if you, in this day and age, depending on what state you are, want to have a shit show in the OR where they're not sure if it's an ectopic or not, so they can't intervene. I mean, ectopics are sometimes very difficult to diagnose. They're hard to see on ultrasound. You have wandering pregnancy. I mean, the whole thing is bizarro land. And now we're dealing with laws that are prohibiting termination of pregnancy when we don't know if it's a healthy pregnancy, but it could threaten your life. You, you do not want to be put in that situation. You don't, put, you don't want to put your doctor in that situation. So I strongly advise contraception for you more than anyone because a pregnancy almost always ends up with an ectopic. There's no healthy place in the uterus left for this baby to implant or worse, a corneal pregnancy, which is right where the fallopian tube and the uterus connect. Those pregnancies are hemorrhagic shit show nightmares because you have so much vascularity there. I've never seen so much blood in the pelvis as I have in corneal pregnancies. It literally looks like a crime scene. So where a topic can threaten your life, a corneal pregnancy that ruptures will kill you if you're not near a med if you're not in the OR, you almost always will die. So I'm not I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm not trying this is shit that has happened. This has been me in the OR shitting my pants. I am not I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent. But like trying to save someone's life. This happens. This was my life. I mean so okay. Um uh, let's see. I'm reading the questions. Thank you so much. What causes this situation? Okay. What are your thoughts on the new ring? Okay, see the new ring thank you for asking, is a form of horm combined hormonal contraception. So when we talk about combined hormonal contraception, we have different ways to get in the body. The most common is the pill, the pill, the birth control pill, okay? You can do it orally, you can do it transdermally like a patch, 
Um, or you can do a vaginal ring. The ring is embedded with the same medication that's in the pill or in the patch. It's just embedded in a ring that is transmucosal. It's slowly released through the bloodstream, it, through the mucosa of the vagina into the bloodstream. It works great. Um, but again, all combined hormonal contraception that requires the user to do something like take a pill, remember to put on a patch, or remember to put the ring, has a typical use rate and a perfect use rate. Perfect use is 99% and that's what they're going to quote you. Actual use is 91%. So one out of 10 women using combined hormonal contraception will get pregnant a year. Let me say that louder to those in the back. One out of 10 women using combined hormonal contraception, typical use. There's nothing wrong with you. You're a human being. You're going to forget. It's almost guaranteed. Will have an unplanned pregnancy. Let me see out there how many of you got pregnant using the pill and you thought you were taking it right. Just drop a comment or like this video. So everybody, um, double tap the screen to like the video. Real quick, you just tap on my face. Everybody tap 10 times. Yeah, all these people got pregnant on the pill. Got pregnant on the pill, okay? Now, it could have been a happy accident. It could have dramatically changed the course of your life for the worse. You know, but failure is expected on the pill. It is much less likely that you get pregnant unintentionally if you use long-acting reversible contraception. Long-acting reversible contraception. Okay, which will be an IUD or the implantable next on because it takes our human being user error out of it. We're all, me included, not gonna be perfect about taking it. Okay, we're not gonna be perfect. Um, okay, yeah, all these people, they got pregnant on the pill, pregnant on the pill, pregnant on the pill. It happens, it happens, one out of 10, a year. One out of 10, a year. So, I love the pill to treat acne. I love the pill to treat cramps. I love the pill to treat premenstrual dysphoric disorder. There's so many great medical indications for the birth control pill, except for birth control. I do not love it for a primary contraception. If I have a patient that the only thing her parents will allow her to take is the pill for her acne, and I know she's sexually active, I am always recommending condoms for backup. One for sexual disease prevention, transmission prevention, and two for backup contraception. Always. Never use condoms. If a pregnancy would devastate you, okay, never rely on a condom for primary contraception. It's only for backup. Always for backup. Okay, so if you think this talk would help someone, most of my followers are 40 and up, okay? Um, if, you, if you want to share this with someone, a loved one, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a daughter, please share this video by clicking this button below. It is also on my Facebook page. It will be saved there. I will download it from TikTok and I will upload it to Instagram and upload it to YouTube as well. So if you're just joining live and you missed the beginning of the talk, no problem, but I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna go to, I'm jump on Facebook and answer some questions. Question, is IUD plus progesterone viable for 20 year old with polycystic ovarian syndrome? Her hormones are a mess with facial hair growth. Thank you for any suggestions to talk to her doctor about. She just stopped her low estrogen due to serious weight gain. So um, it is a wonderful form of contraception for her, but it is not going to help with her acne and facial hair growth um, at all. It might even make it worse because her androgen levels will go back up with her polycystic ovarian syndrome. So one of the benefits of being on using medical indication for combined hormonal contraception like the pill, like the Western that she's on, is that it suppresses the ovulatory production of androgens, so the, fa the facial hair growth will be in check, okay? Now, she can use spironolactone to help control that. There are other ways to help control that hair growth. Make an appointment with your dermatologist to discuss those um, if she chooses to do an IUD for pregnancy prevention, okay? The progesterone in the IUD will protect the lining of her uterus because girl, women with PCOS are more likely to have an ametrial dysplasia and cancer. So the Mirena IUD can be very protective in that way. Um, and then for the other side effects, you can use other medications to treat. So, uh, okay, Amy, if women had taken contraceptives more seriously, what the, okay. 
Uh, we may or may not be at this point. What, I'm sorry, you are judging another woman for a contraceptive failure. I, I'm, I'm, I don't see your point here. I'm, I'm, somebody help me here. If women had taken contraceptives more seriously, so you think that the abortion crisis is due to women not taking contraception seriously. You're kidding, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I have a very strong stance and I will not stand for another woman to attack another woman on her personal choices. That is, you can go, you can unfriend me, you can report this, I don't care. But this, <laughs> this is not the problem is that women not taking contraception seriously. I hope you will, the data does not support you. The data does not back you up. I have lived and breathed and ate and drank OBGYN for the last 25 years. The lack of access to contraception is a definite problem. The lack of education around contraceptive options, which is what I'm doing today, is a definite problem. Women are willing to put hormones in their body to not be pregnant and they're doing it by the millions and we are experiencing failure from that this is not an issue of a woman not taking contraception seriously in large numbers of course there are exceptions to every but i'm telling you as a population this is not what's happening as an OB-GYN, i'm telling and this is, i have read multiple studies on this Back me up in the comments, any, any scholars out there. But this sounds very judgmental and very biased, and I do not accept these kind of comments on my page, so please leave. Okay, this is not, we're here to have a constructive conversation about reliable contraception and what the options are for your daughters. Um, sorry, I know I'm getting up on my high horse. Uh, can someone be prosecuted for traveling to another state for abortion? I, please help me out here. I only know the laws in Texas. Um, and I, you know, it really is going to vary from state to state. I don't know what all the trigger laws are saying. I don't know what the new legislation is saying. So again, it is on a state by state. Um, Stephanie, best birth control to stop periods. Now that your daughter has Down syndrome and autism, she's nonverbal, the shot every three months. Many, many, many. So um, at the institution I worked at for 20 years, we had, we had a lot of patients who were residents of a facility that was long-term care for um, people ex exactly like your daughter. And um, they, some of them just use it for daycare, some used it for you know inpatient long-term facility, but we would quite often offer um, Deborah Provera injections every three months because we needed to get their periods stopped. Being on a period when you're nonverbal and don't understand what's happening is a hygienic disaster. And some of these um, patients had very, very heavy periods, cramps, and so being on depo was a wonderful solution for them. Also, there is a fairly high rate of sexual abuse in some of these facilities. I'm just going to call it for what it is. And this would was <laughs> pregnancy prevention. Uh, not for Downs, they can't get pregnant, but for other mental health disorders where they had normal functioning reproductive facilities, and these people would get pregnant. So, um, okay, thanks for protecting women. You have two daughters. So many questions on this subject. You share this with them. You rock. I cannot tell you how many texts I got last night, um, and I was nonstop texting education information, whatever I can do to just make sure you know what your options are and help you to um, make sure that, let's see, Okay, um, your daughter has been inconsistent about taking the pill. Should you consider an IUD? Absolutely, absolutely. Because even taking it, remember, one in 10 women, she's never gonna be more fertile than she is right now. Fertility decreases with age. So if you have a daughter, I'm assuming she's teens, 20s, whatever, she's, her fertility is at its all time high. And if she's not consistent at taking the pill and she's sexually active, there is a very good chance that she could become pregnant. Okay, so long-acting reversible contraception. I love the pill to treat acne. I love the pill to treat premenstrual dysphoric disorder. I love the pill to treat menstrual migraines. I love the pill to treat a thousand medical conditions that I'm not even gonna list right here. I do not love the pill for contraception because in typical use, it's only 91% effective. One out of 10 women per year get pregnant 
on the pill. One out of 10 women per year get pregnant on the pill. Not an option anymore, okay? Not an option. Um, let's see. Have not found a doc to use pain control for IUD for your daughter. Fucking insist on it. Keep calling till you find someone who will do it. Excuse my language. I'm sick of this. I'm done. People are not going to get these wonderful IUDs because they're scared out of their minds for good reason because it hurts like a motherfucker for a lot of women. Sorry. Excuse my language. I'm getting hot. <sighs> okay. I need to walk a little faster to burn off some of this rage. Um, and we are not trained. I'm not throwing doctors under the bus. These are good people. They're doing what they've been told, which is we were erroneously told in training for years that there are no nerve endings on the, no nerve endings on the cervix. Very quickly in private practice, I realized this must be a fallacy because these women are screaming and crying when I was taught this should not be happening. She must be being dramatic. Bullshit. This shit hurts. Okay? So my standard of care, personal standard of care, based on my experiences with patient and me not willing to hurt a patient, became after a while, and I'm so sad for the women I put through this. I am sorry from the bottom of my heart, but I'm working to change this. Offered, they don't all take it, pre-medication with something like Ativan or Valium, very low dose, an hour before the procedure, as well as a oral, uh, something, a uh, Tylenol, so acetaminophen combined with a narcotic, okay? I don't give oral ibuprofen because I'm giving Catalorac. I'm giving Toradol in clinic. We have it available. I do an injection in their leg 30 minutes before the procedure. So I have those three things going, okay? Now I put the speculum in. I do an injection on the cervix with lidocaine, okay? I have made the injection more. The most painful part of the procedure, any procedure, should be the lidocaine injection. That's a given. I will inject the cervix with lidocaine. I've already made her more comfortable with the pre-medications so I can numb the cervix before I put the tenaculum on, before I sound the uterus, and before I place the IUD. With that combination, I saw a dramatic reduction in the amount of pain that my patients were experiencing with an IUD. That should be the standard of care. Multimodal pain control. Insist. Call, line it up ahead of time, say, this is what I want, this is what I insist on having, and I'm not having it done until you give it to me. And trust me, these docs want to get paid. It costs them zero extra money to give you these, to write a prescription, to give you a shot. Especially most of them are employed in an institution. It's no money out of their pocket. They have that stuff in clinic. I know, because I used to work there. They use it for other procedures, routinely. So, for Copal, for um, Leap, we do cervical injections before we take that ginormous chunk, you know, big giant sausage link out of the cervix. We numb it up. That's standard of care. You have that stuff in your office. They can give it to you. It's possible. So, that's my spiel about that. Um, okay. All right. Um, questions. Let me get to some questions. Okay, so if you are just joining me, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. Yes, I'm on my treadmill walking. It helps me think and it helps me communicate because I'm a little agitated right now and it helps me stay focused. So I'm burning off all this energy um, while I am trying to give evidence-based education around your contraceptive options. So, um, yes, and if you get offended by my personal beliefs that I support women's health care, and abortion is healthcare, that women will die. Absolutely, women will die. I'm not being dramatic. The studies will prove it. And SCOTUS, the blood's on your hand. So, it, anyway, okay. And if that offends you, unfollow me. Go, okay? Um, I understand the sentiment that you don't love abortion as birth control. I think a lot of people feel that way, okay? I respect that. I do respect that. So, I am here, so let's prevent abortions. We prevent abortions by preventing pregnancy. We prevent pregnancy by thinking about it ahead of time and utilizing the most effective options, okay? Which are going to be long active reversible contraception, okay? That should be your primary contraception. Long acting reversible contraception, not the pill. Not the pill, okay? One out of 10 women in actual use will get pregnant on the pill every year. 
more if you're obese. This is an absolute fact. This is no longer, in certain states, an effective form of contraception. There is legislation in some states on the books and definitely in the latest opinion from Clarence Thomas Supreme Court Justice that the right of contraception be struck from the federal rosters. So there are people who are very uncomfortable who are in the legislature with IUDs. They feel that they're abortive fashions. There is no medical indication that an IUD is an abortive fashion, meaning it promotes abortion. It works by thickening the cervical mucus so that sperm cannot be transported to the egg. The end, that's how it works, okay? However, I don't make the laws, and some states are going to try to outlaw IUDs. Go get your IUD now, right now. Whatever you do, have your daughter, your cousin, your friend, your sister, if you're no longer able to get pregnant. And if you've been thinking about sterilization, if you think you're done having kids, go get sterilized. If you don't want to be dealing with hormones and going to the doctor and all that. Okay? Or, better yet, have your partner have a vasectomy. Let's have a vasectomy. Okay? All right. Um, okay. Maybe you should make the laws. Oh, y'all talking to me? I'm not a lawmaker. I'm just a, I'm just a grunt. <laughs> um, who votes? Let's see. I use Marin IUD for years. Recommend it. Awesome. IUDs. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Um, what is good for pH balance during menopause? I will get back to my normal menopause talk. I promise, I promise, I promise. I will go back there. But right now, I am talking about contraceptive options, okay? The best contraceptive options. Um, so, uh, all right. Let's see. I'm looking on Facebook to see if we have any questions. Vasectomy is a great solution for your husband. Um, you teach seventh grader science class. Thank you. The seventh grade boys says the IUD looks like the Tesla logo <laughs> and now you can't unsee it. That's funny. Now I'm not going to be able to unsee it either. Either. Good morning, Dr. Haber. Thank you for sharing this great info. You're so welcome. If you can, please comment, like, and share this video so that I stay relevant on this platform. If you're on TikTok, all you have to do is like my face. So you just tap my face like this. I'm trying to tap it. Yeah, you just see my finger, boom, 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 tap my face 10 times. That will drive the likes on this video. That makes you like me. Okay. Um, Robin, you've always heard that IEDs were for, were for what? Tell me. I want to see what you thought IEDs were for. I'm trying to spread education, awareness, and knowledge around different um, contraceptive options. Let's see. Let's see. Um, you're 50 plus. But you have daughters that needed to hear this. Thank you for having that talk. You're so welcome. I'm your neighborhood gynecologist, just spreading awareness and knowledge. Um, let's see. Your advice is amazing. You're in the UK and so shocked with what's happening in the US. I've gotten a lot of those sentiments from my friends and followers across the world. Um, so can someone be prosecuted for traveling to another state? Oh, how to answer that. Best birth control to stop periods. Your daughter, Down syndrome. We already covered that. You're in Texas. Okay, good. Um, Okay, long-term progestin only that will help with cysts. Depo-Provera is going to be your best bet for that. Uh, on a pill right now, but need long-term. So long-acting reversible contraception is going to be the Nexplanon implant or the intrauterine device. Um, let's see. Thank you for your honesty and your passion. You're welcome. Love you and all your information, especially about menopause. Good job, Dr. Haver. Uh, Let's see. I wish I heard this info 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, if I could go back in time and be who I am today. Unfortunately, I was a hard party. Well, no, 20 years ago, I was a mother. <laughs> I was not partying. <laughs> I would like to pretend 20 years ago I was in high school, but that is not true. That would be 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, or no, 35. <laughs> um, how's that so crazy? Like in my mind, 30 years ago in my mind is like 1970. That was 50 years ago, because I'm 53, and I was born in 68. It's so amazing. Okay, um, thank you for all the likes, guys. Thank you so much for liking this. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for the follows. I did lose quite a bit of followers yesterday. Go in peace and love. If you don't agree with my message, I respect you. I will continue to fight for you and your daughters and your loved ones uh, behind the scenes. I will continue to give excellent 
the world's best menopause care, menopause education, menopause information, but I will not stand down. You know, I got a lot of rough comments about um, why are you getting political? We come here for, you know, health and nutrition information, and why are you getting political about this? I'm like, the only thing that's, you know, women's health care is women's health care. It should be no surprise to any of you as a board certified OBGYN that I stand for women's health care and access to abortion care is part of that, okay? Um, I think abortion should be legal, safe, and rare, okay? I'm here to work on the rare today. And how do we work on rare? Well, we stop having sex is one, okay? Well, that's not an option for a lot of people. Number two, we get on long-acting reversible contraception or we get sterilized, okay? The safest form of sterilization is a vasectomy. Not an option for a lot of women simply because you ain't touching my junk, okay? For no other reason. So let's put the burden on mom. Okay, I'm here for you girls, I got you. Sterilization, surgical, expensive, risky, really overall not very risky, but way less risky than a vasectomy. So I just have to say it out loud. Um, so, but for your daughters, for these youngins coming up in the world where an unplanned pregnancy will now absolutely limit her ability to become the human being she wants to be, then, um, you know, instead of slut shaming and all the things that people have been doing in the comments section on my pages, I will not tolerate that. I will kindly invite you to leave. Um, we acknowledge that we are physical human beings and that sex is a thing. And that, you know, we don't want to carry the burden of a pregnancy that we're not ready for. And so some really reasonable people reached out and said, look, hey, I don't love abortion as birth control. It makes me uncomfortable. I get that. I was raised that way. I was raised pro-life. I was raised Catholic. I totally understand. I was so pro-life for like 25 years. Okay, then life experience and actually taking care of patients have swayed me to realize that my experience is not valid, is not that I should not put my own experiences on other people because I'm a very empathetic physician and that other people go through life events that I cannot understand, that do not apply to me, and I cannot use my personal life experience to judge another person. So, but I understand that. So they asked me to come on and to talk about contraception, and that's why I'm here. Okay, so people who seem reasonable, who don't love abortion as birth control, I mean, you know, doesn't, that's not, that's okay. That is your valid belief. I totally support that. I support everybody's choice. Um, one is, I'm like, hey, uh, so I'm using my platform, my education, and my knowledge to try to spread more awareness about contraception. And if you take nothing else, oh, <laughs> um, someone's asked me how long I've been working out for. I'm just walking on the treadmill. I have no idea. Uh, okay, record indoor walk. I've been walking for, I'm filibustering right now <laughs> to try to get as many people to watch. It only says 20 minutes, but I think it's been longer. Uh, I don't know, a long time, but I'll stay on here as long as there's people here who want me to answer questions. Um, does plan B work after the fetus implants? No, plan B does not work after the fetus implant, after the embryo, that's not a fetus, that's an embryo. Uh, let's get our name straight. So. Uh, I do walk on my treadmill quite a bit. I do I use this as a walking desk, in case you care. So, hang on, see this? So, this is a desk that I bought on Etsy that fits on my treadmill. And then I put some yoga blocks and I put my laptop up here to work. So if you're on Facebook, you can't see that. But, um, so I have now a walking desk and it has helped me stay healthy. Uh, my husband is in Kazakhstan, he is trying to reach me. He's very, very, very worried about me because he knows how empathetic I am and how worried I am about women facing a pregnancy they're not ready for. So um, anyway, if you don't follow me, please do. Uh, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. Um, if you're just joining me, I know a lot of people come in and out of lives. I am going live simultaneously in my Facebook page and on TikTok. I will download this video. I will upload it to YouTube and to Instagram if it lets me and um, let's see uh, let's see thank you so much okay um, IUDs were awful horrible periods 
I'm in my late 30s. I'm done also single suggestions. So here's what I recommend for people like you. Do not rely on birth control pills for contraception, okay? If you're done, you can go and have sterilization if you can afford it. Also, I think an IUD, a progestin containing, or the IUD didn't work for you, so that would be my number one choice. Unfortunately, it did not give you the results you wanted. So, sterilization is definitely an option, or you could consider the Nexplanon. Nexplanon may get your cycles controlled, lighten them up a little bit because of the progesterone in it, um, or get sterilized and go back on the pill for cycle control. No reason you can't do both. Absolutely okay. Um, like I said, I love birth control for the medical benefits. I don't love it for contraception anymore. Okay, I will never recommend it for basic contraception again because it has a one in 10 failure rate per year. These are the numbers. In actual use, one in 10 failure rate per year. Let me say it to those of you in the back. Actual use, one in 10, 91%, one in 10 will fail per year. So we take that one girl out, she's pregnant, another one's getting pregnant out of 10 the next year. Add that up over 10 years and you tell me what happens. Okay. Um, all right, I'm trying to, all right. All right guys, I'm gonna jump off. It's been amazing. Please comment, like, share, whatever. I will try to get some more questions at the end. If you join me late, you can see the entirety of this video where I go through multiple forms of contraception, their risks, their benefits, their indications, their failure rates on my YouTube channel, Mary Claire Haver, and on Instagram at The Galveston Diet. All right, everybody, take care. Oh, an hour. <laughs>